greeting, brothers and sisters. And can we bear witness there is no God but one. We thank him for being the true sender and teacher of holy prophets and of holy apostles. We thank him for his divine wisdom and his perfect understanding of all things. <clears throat> we thank him for the way of holiness that's clearly outlined in the scriptures for our learning. If you want to know what God wants you to do, you have to go to the book of scriptures. And one thing about God's word, it'll lead you the right direction all the time. God have opened up our understanding that we might understand the scriptures and that's what have us preaching so hard and so firm. And I'm grateful how God is opening up the understanding and the hearts and the minds of the people from far and near. We're glad for you that are here so far as I said, 10 went down in the name of Jesus Christ. We uh, we've made plans to baptize all those who want to be baptized today. I believe that was scheduled for 5.30 this evening. So I'm glad that uh, problem was rectified. So all the others who want to be baptized, they get a chance to baptize them today. This is worth driving for miles to get. Can't drive too long. And you can't come too far because hell is longer than any time you drive. I travel around the world and I don't travel to sightsee because I see the same sights. Buildings and devils. I see buildings of every form of architect and I see centers of every race under the sun. And one thing I know that every race got in common, either you're going to be right with God or wrong with God. And one thing about God, he have no respect of person. Had a beautiful meeting last night. Covered a lot of territory. And... Uh, when I think how people came from far, one brother was giving me a testimony how he was raised Muslim, I believe, in Iraq. He said the Holy Ghost led him to us. He said he didn't even know we exist. He said I was raised Muslim all my life. He said, but I want to know the truth about this Jesus of Nazareth. He said the Holy Ghost led him to us and when he saw us for the first time, we answered every question over the telecast that he ever had about Jesus. And he went down in water in the name of the Lord Jesus. The world through religion have tricked, deceived, lied to millions. And that's one of the greatest forms of trickery the devil has. Religion. Because even the devil knows there are many people that are sincere and honest and doing the best they can based upon what they know. And the devil also know that if the opportunity present itself, people would do better if someone would teach them better. But religion has been set up by men. And whenever men set up religion, it, it's been designed to do one thing, make that man rich. Think of it. All this sin in the world, how is it? That every preacher you meet have the same message. God got a miracle with your name on it. The blessing prosperity plan. 
a get rich scheme? As I often tell the people, if you search God's everlasting word in the Old Testament when the Lord sent prophets, in the New Testament when God sent apostles, he sent them to warn you. That's right. To warn you before his judgment or wrath come, they was always sent to warn the people. There's not a man in the Bible was sent to teach you how to make money. You want to know how to make money? Go to college. Get a course under your belt. Get a degree and get a job. But when you come to church, give me the fifth chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes. Let me take my time and work on you a little bit here. All right, follow me in your Bible. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5. And we'll start reading at verse 1. All right. Keep thy foot. Listen at Brother Solomon, son of David. Bible says keep your foot when? When thou goest to the house of God. And what should we do? And be more ready to be hear. Be more ready to hear. Than to give the sacrifice of fools. But they consider not that they do. The good. only thing that have made a false prophet so easily successful. Because he know the people he's preaching to don't know the Bible. That's right. That's right. Let me make an example. The reason why many policemen can violate your human rights and your civil rights. Is because many in society is ignorance of the rights that they actually have. But if you knew law, then the police could not get away with doing certain things to you. It's the same way with the book of scripture. If you are properly taught God's everlasting word, then the preachers could not get away with the lies they've been telling you. Because now knowledge always empowers those who don't know. And once we get knowledge, that empower us to ask questions that preachers don't want us to ask. That's right. That's right. Like when these men been teaching for years that there's a trinity. Yeah. And here the word trinity don't even exist in the Bible. Anything that God wants you to know about him, he told you. God wants you to know how many gods it is. He told you he was one. It is written, the hero Israel, the Lord our God was one. The Hebrew Israelites writing me from all around the world trying to convince me God is black. I don't care what color God is. As long as I obey him. That's it. But I asked the Hebrew Israelite, if he is black, just give me Bible. Where Jesus said he's a black man. Or rather, God the everlasting father is black. And then you got other groups writing me trying to convince me that he's white. If he is white, that don't make the white man right. If he's black, that don't make me right. So what's going to make me right? Living by what he taught. That's it. I don't care if you're so black, all I see is your eyes like a little mouse. <laughs> if you're so white, you blend in with the walls. Camouflage. That's right. Or it's God, when the smoke clear, clear, you got a law you got to obey. Mm -hmm. And the law you got to obey says, Keep thy foot. Keep your foot. When thou goest to the house of God. And when you come to God's house, what should be the most important thing? Be more ready to hear. No, be more ready to sing. Be more ready to hear. Be more ready to dance. Be more ready to hear. Be more ready to have a blessing plan and give your money. Be more ready to hear. The most important part of church is the message. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. You're not having church unless the word of God is being preached. Amen. If the word of God is not being preached, you ain't having church. Oh, you just got people performing and singing and someone playing guitar and 
beat on a drum and kick a tin can around and <laughs> choir get up singing half negatively like a bunch of sinners from a stripper's club That's and right. preacher get up shaking and jumping around with his hands over his ears. That don't mean nothing. Nothing, amen. Nobody is having church without God everlasting word. Be more ready to hear. Be more ready more, to hear. More ready. More ready. That's why we travel the world taking our time laboring, teaching the people. And we must understand we all need to be retort. Oh yeah. Think of it. You have Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Protestant, Catholic, Christian Science, Church of England. You know that's of the devil. <laughs> that's just pure of the devil. Pure. Jesus said, upon this rock, I built my church. He ain't had Queen Elizabeth in mind. No, he didn't. Did it? No. No way. So when did God empower man, think of it, brothers and sisters, and gave man the right to start a church? The church supposed to be a divine institution of God. If church is a divine institution of God, why is it the word of God is not being taught and the wisdom of men now runs the church? Amen. I'm laboring to tell the world, come on back to what the word of God said. And when everybody agrees with the Bible, it'll cut down sin in the church. That's right. People look at me like I lost my mind because I'm preaching against sin. Something is wrong with that picture. I'm preaching against sin. And they say he's mean. One woman wrote me and she said, I don't care what you preach against. I'm going to live like the devil all I want. Go ahead. Hell gonna do a quicker job of converting you than I can. That's right. You know, you know, I don't care how heavy a man's voice is, and if his voice is heavier than mine, but if he's at the stove and that grease from that chicken hit his hand, yeah. I don't care how heavy his voice is, his voice elevates. Oh, yeah. yeah. Amen. Hey, man, I, I, if I'm near the stove and my wife is cooking and that grease hit me, you don't hear me saying, oh, <laughs> I don't do that. That grease hit my ham. Ow! Oh, my. Yeah, my voice elevates. Why? Conversion took place. That's right. Can you get what I'm telling you? That's right. Doesn't matter how stubborn, how arrogant, how self-righteous, how much money you have, how much money you don't have. A lot of churches glory because they got a church full of celebrities. There's nobody more popular than God. Amen. Celebrities, so-called celebrities, come in first church all around the world. And I tell them, because they're used to, you know, people acknowledging them and getting a special seat. And I remember I had some NBA players, basketball players came to the headquarters in Philadelphia. They're towering up. You know, and I told them, thank you for being here. And I went on to preach the word. And after service, they came and shook my hand. And one gentleman said, Pastor Jennings, I know you didn't give us the type of accolade we get from other churches. I asked him one question. Are you God? He said, no. I said, that's why I didn't do it. I said, church is supposed to be about God. It ain't about you. I don't care who you are. The celebrity status, what do the celebrity have in common with a man or woman that is not known? You're born of a woman. You got to eat to live. You got to wash so you don't fumigate the room. And you're going to die. Solomon says, how do the wise man die? As the fool. So when these mega churches and mega preachers like T.D. Jakes and Crefla O'Dollar and these other street hustlers that pose as preachers, 
make you think that right here is heaven and if you don't drive a car like them or have a mansion like them, you ain't blessed. No, you're not blessed if you don't know God. Having a mansion don't mean you bless. That's right. Because when you die, can you take it with you? No. You got a bankroll, fine. But can you take it with you? Listen, I don't care if your bathroom is big as this auditorium and your tub is big as this stage and you float like a leaf in a river. <laughs> if your toilet seat is high as the balcony and your legs dangle, and when they come and they look up, are you done yet? <laughs> when it's all over, we one day, listen at this. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 and at verse 7. Follow me. For we brought nothing into this world. I want to pound this in the minds of the people. That's right. You came here without anything. Nothing. nothing. This is the teaching of God. For we brought nothing into this world. We brought nothing into this world. And it is certain. Listen here. It is certain. It's certain. We can carry nothing out. The preaching of materialism is the preaching of Satan. That's right. God purposed that the world obey him. There's nothing wrong with having materialistic things. The sin is when materialism possess you. And the sin is when preachers try to build the kingdom of God based upon materialistic possession. Amen. You see, God don't want you to have nothing or hold nothing tighter than him. He don't want nothing to get your attention greater than him. If you get a job and you drive a Bentley, all right, go ahead. Drive your Bentley. All it can do is get you from point A to point B. Drive your Rolls Royce and all right, fine. If you got a house that got 23,000 rooms, that's a lot of cleaning. But you're going to die. Now, this life, the word of God is to prepare us for death. And the message of holiness is to prepare us for death that we may be prepared when the Lord come to give us life. Today, churches are not preparing you for death. You think because you got a will and a big insurance policy, you ready to meet the Lord? Your mind, soul, body, and spirit belongs to God. Everything about your being belongs to God. Even though it belongs to God, I have to be taught how to give God what he gave me. Now, if I'm not properly taught how to give myself to God, and if I'm not taught what am I made for, you're going to spend the rest of your life smoking, drinking, gambling, partying. Out there. Look at the so-called Christians now. They party. There's no more new creature. They talk about being born again. Born from what? Saved from what? You go into what is called Christian churches now. <clears throat> they got a gay flag flying on a church That's right. a rainbow flag on a church that represents Jesus can you imagine you can't get sweet and bitter water from the same fountain and I know homosexuality is, 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 is like free choice here Amen. in Great Britain my Lord <laughs> eh? free choice and it's, in, it's everywhere now. What is it? It's the spirit. This is the spirit. Your mother can be straight. Your father can be straight. And a gay spirit can come right in your house. The father can be straight. The mother can be straight. And both of them baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. But a spirit can come right in your house. That's right. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? 
Listen. Keep thy foot. Keep your foot. Give Ecclesiastes. chapter and verse. Back in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 1. What is it? Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Now when you come to God's house, what you mean keep your foot? God wants you to pay attention. Pay attention to the word of God more than you do anything else that go on in church. That's right. Don't look at nobody. Don't What you mean don't look at nobody? Don't pay attention to what they got on, how they respond to the word. If the word of God beat them out of their clothing, let their clothes fall off and you just get ready for yours also. Because the word of God is going to clean you up. God knows. Amen. Keep your foot. When thou goest to the house of God. And. And be more ready to hear. Be more ready to do what? Be more ready to hear. Then. Then to give the sacrifice of food. Why, son? For they consider not that they do eat. What else did the preacher advise us to do? Be not rash with thy mouth. Nor. And let not thine heart be hasty. To utter anything before God. You better be careful what come out of your mouth. Be careful what come out of your mouth. You know, some folks say, I never do this and I never do that. God can make you do. Amen. I, I meet thousands of people in my travel. That I've met folks that said they never thought they'd be in church. Yeah. Pastor Jennings, I never thought I've met a lot of men. And that's one thing that shocks a lot of people because they see a lot of men in first church. Most of them. Churches don't have a lot of men. A lot of men may cater to Islam. But a lot of men don't come to church because they, even they know church don't offer them nothing. Right. they just as much as a devil in church as they are out in the street. That's right. But when you come to holiness, holiness demands discipline. Right. Holiness work on that man and take the stubbornness out of him and the rebelliousness out of him and teach him how to humble himself before the mighty hands of God. What is it? Be not rash with thy mouth. Don't be rash with your mouth. And let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Please be slow to speak. Some folks say, I never, I never serve the Lord. Don't talk too quick. I'm saying, oh, you will never, you will never make me go to church. God can make you do anything. That's right. Hmm? Oh, I never pray. Keep living. I, I, I keep living. Brother, when God can bring something in your life, you'll be praying, snotting, and crying. That's right. Laying on your face like King David. Boo-hooing. Amen. What is it? Wherefore, my beloved brethren, now in St. James chapter 1 and at verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brothers, let every man, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak. Did you hear that? Amen. Swift. Swift to hear. Hear, but slow to speak. Because Jesus said, by thine words we are justified. And by thine words we shall be condemned. So I don't want nothing to come out of my mouth that God going to have a problem with. That's right. That's why we encourage people moreover. Never approach the Bible with your personal feelings. And your personal views. Don't do that because God is not going to agree with us. Amen. No, 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 no. God don't have to agree with us. He's God. Amen. But we have to agree with him. That's, right. eh? That's, right. That's why you find churches that are set up by men, they're afraid to hurt your feelings. I mean, why? Because they don't want, if they hurt your feelings, they feel as though they hurt your wallet. And they want your money so bad and tell they don't preach against no wrong. That's why every sermon they have, you know, people's like, it's, it's so nice in here. <laughs> no sin is preached against, no fornication, no remarriage and divorce, no adultery, no lying, no nothing is preached against. You go to churches, they just say, let everyone say amen. Hold the neighbor next to you and say, neighbor, the Lord love you. Look to your left at the neighbor there and say, neighbor, the Lord love you. And the preacher get up and tell you, well, I feel so happy today. And it's so wonderful when I think of the love of Jesus. And he don't preach Bible. He preach songs. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he done for me, all oh my soul. Then he go to another song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch not me. He go from song to song. People write me, say, Pastor Jenner, you always condemn things. I don't condemn nothing. The Bible condemns things. 
The Bible is against sin, is it not? Yes. Are, are we, do we got sin in us? Yes. We don't want our sin spoken against, do we? If you tell the truth, you don't want nobody bother your sin. I have never seen a burglar who want to be arrested. <laughs> when a burglar is picking the lock, he don't tell the police, hurry up, hurry up. If you're going to catch me, hurry up. He don't do that. When a man break out of prison, when that spotlight go, his objective is hide from the light. And if the light hit him, he run somewhere else. That's the way folks are about the word of God. Isaiah chapter 30 and at verse 10. Glory to God. Listen at this. We say to the seers, see not. Uh-oh. The Bible going to teach us the way people feel and how they think. Give chapter and verse again so you can follow me in the Bible. Isaiah chapter 30 and we're at verse 10. All right. We say to the seers, see not. This is what people say to the seers, meaning the one that got the oversight, the one who's supposed to be pastoring them, leading them. This is the way they feel. We say to the seers, see not. Don't go see, the, don't go see our wrong. And to the prophets. And this is what they say to the prophets. Prophesy not unto us right things. Amen. Isn't that something to say? Amen. This is the way folks feel about the preacher. That's right. Don't you tell us what's right. Speak unto us smooth things. Smooth. <laughs> what do the people want? Smooth, smooth things. That's what the preachers are preaching. Some years ago I was here in the UK and I was watching the news. And they opened up an uh, atheist church. And I was watching the dedication service of that church. Church was bigger than this. In fact, it was an abandoned Catholic church that they all came together and bought. Packed with people. And the chief speaker, he said, it's a wonderful day to be among so many unbelievers. He said, it's a good feeling to know there is no supreme power over us. Well, if that's what you want to believe, fine. But the Lord have a way of making you accept reality. The Bible said the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Because you don't believe that God exists, that don't take away his existence. You may not believe that if you get on the expressway and just stand there, you're going to get killed. If you don't believe it, go ahead. When that truck hits you and drag you, and then that car run over you, and then that motorcycle hits you, and then that other car hits you. And when your body becomes dismembered, you a dead believer. That's right. <laughs> you, you get what I'm telling you? That's right. You a dead believer. Amen. Listen at this. We say to the seers, see not. You see, the spirit of the people, the way they feel today is the same way they felt yesterday. That's right. Years ago, they don't want a man of God to tell them what's right. And whenever a man of God speak out against the wickedness of the world, right then they say he's mean, he's evil. And one of the greatest statements they said, he don't have the love of Christ. Because they believe Christ from this Hollywood version. If you take note, the way Hollywood paint Jesus, he always timid. He always timid and talk like a sissy. <laughs> And that's the Hollywood version of Jesus. That's right. He's always timid. Go away, my child. <laughs> and he's always standing like this. You know? Have you ever noticed every picture that's supposed to be Jesus? Go away, my child. Sin no more. Yes, come out of him. Even when he's supposed to cast out the devil, hush your mouth. <laughs> Come out of him. Satan, I rebuke you. <laughs> Am I right, I said? Glory to God. That's the Hollywood Jesus. But the Jesus in the Bible, if he was walking around here today, he would be labeled as militant. Oh, yeah. He was turning over tables. Let me show you how militant he was. Give me Matthew chapter 23. Let me show you how militant this Jesus was. Matthew chapter 23. Listen at what he called the Pharisees and the Sadducees 
Listen at this militant, loving Jesus. Matthew chapter 23, <laughs> we're starting at verse 13. All right. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. <laughs> Hypocrites. What did Jesus call them? Hypocrites. Hypocrites. At verse 14. I want, I want to read every statement he made. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrite. Hypocrite. For you devour widows. You devour. House. That's what the preachers do. They take money from the woman if she ain't already got none. Make you believe the blessing plan and tell you the Lord just spoke to me and said if there's five thousand dollars more in the house and if you give these five and then he go off in the tongue. He come on my side. You got to buy me a Honda. <laughs> and you fall for it. That's right. In America, these preachers trick the people big time. Was it last year when Creflo Dollar got over the air and said the Lord told him it's time for him to have a new jet? Came before the church, he said, the Lord says, it's time for y'all to buy me a new jet. And they bought it, $65 million. Before I came here to England, another big false prophet got over the air. He told the people, the Lord told me to tell y'all it's time for y'all to get me my fourth jet. And that cost $54 million. Let, imagine Pastor Jennings, as tough as I am, get over the air. If I just told the folk, look, the Lord said, give me $5. They'd be like, let that, let that devil die. <laughs> let that devil die. That's right. Don't give him nothing. That's right. Glory to God. Yeah. My God, man, when you really working to do, and I'm laboring to do this thing right, you won't get me to send the size of a rat's wisdom tooth to get a dime. Glory to God, if God don't make a way for us to open up churches, we won't send to do one thing to get a dime to reach the people. That's right. What did he say? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Look at this. Jesus warned to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. hypocrites. When you devour widows' houses. You devour widow houses. And for a pretense, make long prayers. And they pretend. Look, at the, look how the Bible itemizes it. Look at the preachers now. A lot of them are performers, you know. You come up for prayer. And when you come up for prayer, they, by the time they're done with you, you more sicker than you was before you came up there. You know, when people come up for prayer, I pray for them. And you're gone. I don't be all over you hollering. Get it out! <laughs> Have you seen that in churches? Yes. yes. Am I right, I said? Yes. Yeah, I, I didn't have no headache. I didn't have no bad shoulders. My neck was fine. And now you don't sh shook me around so bad. I need a chiropractor and a neck brace. That's right. That's right. For a pretense, make long prayer. How do they pray? For a pretense. They pretend. Make long prayer. Long. That's why we take our time to teach the people because we want you to know the danger of a false prophet. Amen. Bible says, beware of false prophets. Beware of wolves in sheep clothing. Listen at this. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Uh -huh. What were you scribes and Pharisees? Hypocrites. That's a militant Jesus. All them names he called? Amen. Hypocrites. For you can pass sea and land to make one oh, proselyte. Oh, you go all over the place to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more. The child of hell, then yourself. Once the false prophet done with you, you are worse than you was before you met him. The book says you are more, more the twofold child, child of hell than yourself. Than yourselves. What want you, ye blind gods? Look at all as Jesus call him. Right. Not one time did Jesus call him brother. <laughs> no, it is. No, it is. He didn't call them brother. He didn't call them Christian. That's right. Yeah. That's right. What else did he call them? What want you? Blind you guys. blind guy, you fools, <laughs> and blind. Now I guarantee he ain't standing like that, calling him. No. Go ahead, take God. He's laying it to him. God knows. That's right. Why is Jesus calling all these names? 
Because these are the action and the deeds of the people. The wickedness that is in the human family now. Church have become nothing but a haven for folks to congregate to play church. That's right. I'm pretty sure you have it here in the UK because it's all over America. Praise dances. Where the pulpit there's a big stage and what they call praise dances, they may have some music playing out the speakers and they get some men and some girls be all up on the stage and look like ballerina clothes or they all get dressed the same color and they all just dance to worldly music in church. God said my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. But the church now is not a house of prayer. It's an entertainment center. Amen. You should not be selling tickets to come in God's house. That's right. In fact, you should not be tell, selling tickets to come see anything and they're supposed to represent Jesus. Because if that thing is of God and God want me to be there, I should be able to come free. The Bible says come without money and without price. Are you listening? When we go someplace and people see it all over the media, Pastor Jen is going to be in that country or in that state, in that city. Sometimes they always contact my media secretary, Sister Cindy Rollins, and they always ask, how, how much it costs for admission? Because folks must don't pay attention to us preaching. And Sister Rollins always tell them, oh, you don't got to pay to go see him. You come free. And people shop. Because they go, they pay to see these. You got to pay to see Jake's and Creflo Old Nickel. And the cotton candy preacher, Joel Alstein. You got to pay to see these fellas. That's right. These fellas can come here to Great Britain. And when they leave, they're going to walk away with several million dollars. I come broke, leave broke. <laughs> Y'all you hear what I'm telling you? That's right. The greatest blessing I get is when I see souls come to repent of their sins and go down in water and come walk with the word of God. That's the greatest. That's the greatest joy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's more joy than going back with a bankroll. To see you obey the word of God and give your life to God and come out of sin. That's priceless. Oh, we take God. Do you get what I'm telling you? What did the Holy Ghost say? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. hypocrites. You blind guides. You strain at a net and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, uh -huh. hypocrites. Hypocrites. Thou blind yeah. Pharisees. Look at what Jesus is telling them. Amen. He didn't say brother, <laughs> sister, <laughs> my child. He ain't do that. Thou blind Pharisees. He's condemning their actions. That's right. And he's giving them a name based upon the way they act. All right, go back to the way you are. Everybody all right? Amen. Come on, son. Back in Isaiah chapter 30 and at verse 10. All right. You say to the seer, see not. This is the way the people feel about the preacher. Don't see the wrong. Mm -hmm. Ignore it. Overlook same-sex marriage. They just, they just passed a law in America. I think it was last week or week before last. Where they changed the language now of all marriage vows. You know we say, we pronounce you husband and wife. But now to accommodate same-sex marriages, they eliminate the term husband and wife and say, we pronounce you a spouse. They say it because we don't want to offend nobody. I don't care who I offend with the word of God. Amen. Bible says, should a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife? wife. Not cleave to his man. I want it to be good in case I got anybody that's here from Dairy Queen land. Or oh, that God, I'm going to clip your Great Britain wings off. Right. Well, Pastor Jennings, you know, you should love the gay. I do love it. I love all gay people, but I hate your deeds. Yes. Face the fact, God ain't made a man for another man. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Let me say it again. God, I said, God. 
have not made a man for a man and have not made a woman for a woman. God didn't do that. And the devil knows it. Now here it is, man. Listen, listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How in the world can a man even look at a man the way he look at a woman? A man is like a totem pole. Straight up. How you gonna look at that and get joy? And you a man. That's right. And look at a pole the same way you look at a woman? Something is wrong with you. Yes. Am I right, I said? Yes. I don't care if you're down on the down low. There's a place lower than where you are. The hell you going? And you bear in mind, I wouldn't care who you are. I wouldn't care if you was my father, my son, my mother, my brother. If William turned gay, the hell he's going. <laughs> Am I right, I said? <laughs> Men won't preach this because they're afraid of offending people. Yeah, right. Or they got gays in their family. I got gay relatives. What do I care? See, gay today don't mean the same thing it did years ago. Years ago when they say you gay, that means you're you happy. You know you're happy. Now, you done went past happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. God said, let us make men. And when God made us men, God ain't timid. We're men. We walk like a man. Talk like a man. Mix it up like a man. When I was in the street coming up in the hood, we mixed it up. I wasn't fighting like this. I didn't do that. You call me out. Come on, Nick. I'm like, oh yeah, come on. Let's mix it up. I wasn't out there. Come on. <laughs> Am I right? You got one of the largest Jewish synagogues in Philadelphia. The whole synagogue, including the rabbi, homosexual. Even in Islamic countries now, homosexuals. When Barack was president, Barack came to Jamaica. And Barack went to African countries and tried to force them to change their law books and condone same-sex marriages. And Barack went to Jamaica a week before I did. I ended up there the next week. And I did a broadcast. And I was laying the Jamaican government out, encouraging them, don't you bow no. to Barack. <laughs> Barack was so persistent with this agenda, he threatened Africa and Jamaica and the Caribbean, all countries who would not accept same-sex agenda, he threatened to not allow their goods he put sanctions against them. Can you imagine that you will put sanctions against a country because you want two men to get married? But Jamaica didn't bow. I told the prime minister, I told her over the air, don't you give in. I told the prime minister, I told the Prime Minister, it doesn't matter if America's ships never come to your shores again. God will provide. God will provide. The African countries, they didn't look at Barack because he was black. They told him, oh no. Over here, we killed men like that. Hmm? They didn't care because he was black. They knew that God had a law. You don't find a male lion trying to mount up on a male lion. 
When a male lion see another male lion, they going to fight. Am I right, I said? Oh, they're ready to fight. But this is how bad it's getting, brothers and sisters. Why is it growing so? It's a spirit. Homosexuality is a spirit. There was a father who brought his seven-year-old son to me and said, Pastor Jennings, my son said every night when he go to sleep, a voice come to him and tells him. And the kid is seven. He said, a voice tells him, you're gay. You do not have to like girls. Do you know it was several parents came to me and told me the same thing happened to their children? Girls and boys. You can be straight, but the spirit of the devil change your mind, change your heart. That's why I got to pound on itself. That's right. I have to do it. Yes. Glory to God. What did he say? Which say to the seers, see not. Which say to the seers, see not. And they want me to overlook it. I ain't overlooking nothing. You won't see no rainbow flag on First Church. No way. My God, man, if I, I ride up to it and burn it down. That's right. Huh? Like the old Frankenstein movies where they got the torches. <laughs> I'd be outside with a torch. Set it on fire. Burn, fire. burn it down. That's right. Come on. We say to the seers, see not. See not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us. Pro right don't things. tell us what's right. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Got something to tell somebody. Wait a minute. You want us to prophesy what? Prophesy deceits. What do they want the preacher to do? Get you out of the way. <laughs> Get out of God's way. Get out of God's will. Get out of God's purpose. And? Turn aside out of the path. Get out the path. People have offered me money if I would stop preaching against sin. A preacher offered me his whole organization. If I just will condone divorce and remarry, I told him no. We turned down seven million dollars and some change last year. There was an organization who wanted the rent. The Lord bless us, as you know, with that new campus in Philadelphia. And there was a organization who wanted to rent one of our schools in the gymnasium and they offered us over a hundred thousand dollars a month over a hundred thousand dollars a month with a seven-year contract but I have a letter written up to whom it may concern anyone who desires to rent our church facilities our belief is holiness and whoever rent these facilities must abide by the following. One, you cannot have no Christmas parties. Two, no Christmas decorations. Three, no Christmas plays. Four, no Halloween, no Halloween celebrations of any kind. Five, no rainbow flags. Six, no homosexual um, celebrations. Seven, you can't have no parties in on these facilities. When he read that, they say, well, we respect your belief, uh, uh, but we'll move on and find something else. <laughs> so the Catholics contacted me and said, Pastor Jennings, we heard that you was offered over seven million dollars, I mean, for a seven year contract. And the man said to me, you mean to tell me you passed up over seven million dollars over a belief? Yes. I said, that's right. <laughs> That's right. He said, man, I got new respect for you because he said to me, I ain't passing up no money. He told me, he said, I ain't passing up no money. Money should not dictate your faith. Either you for God or you're not. When you really for God, you can walk away from billions and it won't phase you. Amen. Because there's nothing in the universe more richer or more precious than your Lord. Do you understand this? What did he say? Get you out of the way. Get out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. What? Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease 
from before. This is what the people want. They, they even want the preacher to please get out of the way, get out the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel. Don't even, I want you to teach so that God is not in front of us. To cease from before us. Don't keep God in front of us. That's right. Don't keep the word of God in front of us. That's right. Give us your own opinion. Give us your idea. Turn the church into a Christian comedy club. Everything that the sinner have now, so-called Christians have, Christian comedy club. <laughs> Who ever heard of such ignorance? Christian roller derby. A, they, they got in Philadelphia, a Christian striptease club. You might as well just pack a bag and just go on to hell and get it over with. A Christian striptease club, the only one goes there are Christians and the strippers are Christian women. Ha, ha, that's the devil out of hell. Yes. Huh? Yes. Christian music playing. This little light of mine. And she's stripping it to it. I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> hell! Oh, God. Oh, that's the devil out of hell. Yes. This little light of mine. You going to let it shine, huh? Oh, yeah, all right. That's the devil. Yes. So, when I came up, my parents used to tell me, that the church is the light to the world. Have you used to hear that? Now it's totally opposite. The world is a light to church. Because have you noticed, every time sinners introduce something, church mimic it, church imitate it. When the sinner came out with rap videos, young, exploiting our young women, shaking their behinds everywhere. Look at Kirk Franklin. Look at the so-called Christians. They come out with rap videos, same rhythm, doing the same dance, doing the same thing. The Bible said in Leviticus 10, 10, put a difference between holy and unholy. It got to be a difference between God's people and the sinner. When the choir get up and sing, if they clap and rock back and forth, fine. Clap, rock back and forth. But when you try to get like the world and doing all this, Wait, 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 wait. That, this is church, man. What are you doing? That's right. What are you doing? Amen. It ain't no one should be getting up in the church, getting a microphone. Come on, some, come on. Come on. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, this is church. What you doing? Amen. Yes, sir. Am I right like that? Yes, right. This is church. Right. It's an embarrassment what church has become. What the Holy Ghost said? Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. The reason why churches have gotten this bad and the preachers go along with it because it brings income. It brings money. And the Bible says the love of money is what? It's the root of it. It's the foundation of it. The Bible says while some have covered it after, they have error. From the belief of God or from the faith, they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. All right, go back to the fifth chapter book of Ecclesiastes. Everybody all right? Yes. Listen. Back in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and at verse 1. Uh -huh. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. This is serious business. I want every brother that minister to get this because you're in a serious position. This is serious business, brother. Keep that in foot when you go to the house of God and be more ready to hear. You see, to be a good teacher, you got to be a good listener. Amen. Be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of food. Because you don't think of that you do evil. Well, they consider not that they do evil. You, a person got to even look at the songs they sing in church. Because you can sing a lie like you can tell one. Yes. The Bible just said all liars shall have their part in the lake. All of them. Whether you sing it, whether you tweak it, whether you text it, whether you email it. If it's a lie, it's just a lie. That's right. We want to make sure all the words of our song are right. Mm -hmm. Be not rash with thy mouth. I'll be rash with your mouth, Let nor be heart, heart be hasty. Be hasty. anything before God. Why? For God is in heaven. And? Thou upon earth. For that reason? Therefore let thy words be few. Real quick. For a dream coming through the multitude of visions. Yes. And the fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. Uh -huh. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay. Now you better be slow about making a vow. A lot of people make vows to the Lord, but that's not something I advise you to be hasty to do. 
All right? For he has no pleasure in fools. Listen, if you make a vow don't live up to it, God don't get no pleasure out of what you've done. Hey he that, called you a fool. That's right. And God advised, hey that which you better pay vowed. what you vowed. Better is it? Listen, it's better that thou shouldest not vow that you hadn't said anything than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. You know when you make God a promise, you better try hard to live up to it. Amen. A lot of times we make God a vow, Lord, if you do this, I'll do the other. And some of us think that if we make a vow, it'll make God do something for us. No, it don't work like that. You don't have to make a vow for God to answer your prayer. You don't have to make a vow for God to do something for you. But if you make one, Brother, God going to hold you to it. Amen. All right. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Wait a minute. Suffer not thy mouth. That means don't let your words. To cause thy flesh to sin. Some folks say, Lord, if you bless me with a car, I never miss church. God bless me with a car. They ride right by the church. <laughs> and keep moving. Lord, you bless me with a job. Be faithful, paying my tithe and offering, and I support the church. The moment they get a job, oh, I don't believe in tithing no more. <laughs> I don't believe in offering. Question, real quick. Yes, sir. No, the preacher don't have the authority nor the right to make you make a vow. If you make a vow, it has to be on your own accord between you and the Lord. When thou vows a vow unto God. The Bible says when you do it. Not when somebody forced you to do it, because if somebody forced you to do it, that don't mean you necessarily meant it. You just done it because somebody told you. No, when you make a vow, you have to do it on your own accord between you and God, not being forced by anybody. All right? Because he um, uh, uh, made us uh, uh, made a vow of uh, pledging like a thousand pounds for, to raise money for Listen, the church. these devils will try to make you pledge your soul. That's why they, they, they put that over you. You know, give an extra amount of money, pledge, you know, like I often say over the air. Now don't misunderstand me, it takes money to run anything. You know, it takes money to pay your bills, it takes money to buy turkeys. Like we want to set up turkeys throughout Europe. And, and the angels in heaven ain't coming down to get it. We're going to have to raise money and buy them. And uh, this is the way we buy churches all over, through tithing and offering and sacrifice. This is how we buy churches and everything else so people can have a place to go to hear the word of God. But if a person can't give it, you can't give it. And a lot of the preachers try to do that to you and then try to work on your sympathy to make you feel bad and tell you, well, look, you promised. You promised the Lord. In all actuality, you promised the preacher. <laughs> you didn't promise the Lord. You promised that preacher. And they try to hold that over your head. If you got something to give the Lord, nobody got to pressure you. If you want to give God something, you will give it. All right? All right, real quick. Better is it that thou shouldest not bow. It's better... And you don't want to make a vow based upon your emotion. Because emotions fluctuate. It's best that you know what you're doing and know what you're thinking. And you don't make a vow based upon the way you feel. You're going to be deceived by what you feel. All right. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow. It's better that you should not have vowed. Than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Uh -huh. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. And neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Yeah. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice? Listen, I don't want God angry with me. I'd rather have you angry with me. I can get over that. But if God is angry with me, I'm in trouble. It ain't no man so strong or so wealthy that he can beat God. Nobody. I look at these men who walk around the streets with their pants hanging down, advertising they behind like they gay. <laughs> men walk around with ear. Why is it that men want to be more feminine? Have you noticed that? Yeah. And the women want to be more masculine. Our young men got your pants hanging down, showing your drawers. Pull your pants up. 
What's the matter with you? A bunch of young men walk around with each other. <laughs> when I was looking at a program, there was an interview with a guy who'd been in prison about 20 something years. He said, listen, when these young men out there saying they got this style wearing their pants down from prison, he's saying they lying. He said, man, we don't wear our pants like that in here. We try to hide our behind. <laughs> he said, so we love it. When we see these young men coming into prison with their pants down, oh, he said, we can't wait to get a hold of you. He said, because to us, when your pants is down, that's an invitation. Imagine Pastor Jennings coming in here with my pants hanging down. I'm preaching with my pants hanging down and Williams Reed with his pants hanging down. And Huey, one of my photographers, he's running all around with his pants hanging down. That's the devil! How the hell God knows? Brother Austin directing the choir, pants hanging down. <laughs> but again, they'll tell you there ain't nothing wrong with it. I get thousands of letters from all around the world. People telling me there ain't nothing wrong with it. The way the churches have gotten now, it's no sin in being a sinner. Isn't that something? Really, it's no sin in being a sinner. Bible says if any man, give me that, if any man be in Christ, he is what? Now when you're in Christ, you're not going to be new overnight. Let me explain it this way. You get a caterpillar. It don't become a butterfly overnight. It goes into that cocoon and be born again. It's Holy converted. It gets a new body, new look, and a new name. But before that takes place, it has to get to itself in its own cocoon. And sometime before you can get right with God, you have to get away from your surroundings. Those surroundings that got an influence on you, that's keeping you thinking the way you are, that's keeping you acting the way you are, sometimes to do right, you got to get away from those surroundings, and sometimes those surroundings may be your own family. <laughs> Did not the Lord tell Abraham, get out from among your kingdom? What do you mean? Get away from your family. Bro, you expect to stop smoking if you hang around smokers. How do you expect to ever put that bottle down when you always around your friends that drink? How can you stop cussing when you always around your friends who can't even complete a sentence without MF and SOB? Sometimes you gotta get away from everybody and just get between you and God. Jesus called it the secret closet. That means get to yourself. What did he say? 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. Says what? Therefore, if any man, if any man, be in Christ, he is a new creature. Do you hear this? It takes teaching to develop us to be new. We are robbed from the opportunity of being new, regardless of how hard we try. We can't be new unless we got teaching. We, we, we can try, we can try, we can try. But if we ain't got teaching, it's like taking new paint and putting it over rust. What's going to happen? The rust still going to bleed. Until that rust is repaired or removed and sand and clean, then paint it. Well, anybody, I, I love classic cars, you know. And anyone that really do classic cars, brother, they take it apart like a puzzle. Every boat, then they tag it, label it. It's not like these modern mechanics today, you come in with the car, and then all of a sudden you get your car repaired when you leave, they give you some of the parts in the bag and say, oh, you didn't need this. <laughs> Listen, I came in with it, then I should leave with it. They tell you, you didn't need this. When someone restore a car, Every bolt, every panel, they take it, lay it out like a puzzle, and then restore everything. The old car is real chrome. In other words, if I hit you, and if God don't spare your life, you're dead. You can't recycle that stuff. 
take a nice 1937 Packer and hit a 2018 Jaguar, my Packer going to stand. Your Jaguar going to meow because I'm going to blast it to pieces. So God, through the scriptures, takes us apart piece by piece, section by section, and then slowly but surely push you back together. That's what restoration is. It don't happen overnight. It's a gradual, slow process. But in many of these churches, you don't even get the chance. You don't even get the opportunity. Real quick. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new preacher. All right, young man, what's on your mind? You got your hand up. What's your question? Um, in school, what are the tenants that have... Come on up here, son, so I can hear Come on up here. Come on. Come on, young man. God bless you all. Come on up here so I can hear what you got to say. What's on your mind, son? No, no. The parents suppose a discipline. Uh, you do wrong, the parents talk to you. Then if you keep doing wrong, then the parents got to spank you, beat you. The Bible says beat you, child. What's your name, son? Travis? Oh, yeah, my youngest brother's name is Travis. So, uh, Travis, if you was my son and you did it wrong, you would say, Travis, all right, I told you blah, 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 you got to smack it. Don't do it no more. And then you say, all right, Dad. Then I see you out there again, Travis! Didn't I tell you? Yeah. After the third time, I'm not going to keep talking. Because the Bible said, God speak once, he twice. And man receive it not. So Travis, when your father tell you something, you're supposed to obey what he said. See, it's like, if you do wrong, but you can't expect to pat on the back. It's like when you get, go to school and get bad grades, you get all E's, and those E's ain't for excellence. <laughs> Get F. It ain't for fine either. <laughs> then your father will want to know, what are you doing in school? What are you doing? Right. You can't say, well, I don't know. I'm not doing nothing. That's the problem. <laughs> so then he's going to lay you out, son. And he's going to put that bell on to you. And you're going to be looking like people in church. <laughs> That's right. That don't mean he don't love you. Because the Lord just ties us. I'm a grown man, and God just ties me. Listen, when your father just ties you, it feels better than when the Lord does. Get it while you can. When you become a grown man, you're going to look back on those days, and you're going to value them. That's right. You're going to respect them. Because just ties a child is part of bringing up the child. Are you getting it? And he wants the best out of you, and I want the best out of you. All right, chat? All right. Our young brothers and sisters are the future church. The streets want them. Question, yes, sir. I have never heard of the book of Joshua. I would like one copy of the Holy Scripture. Yes, sir. I read the book of Joshua. I mean, it gave me a lot of the things that the King James does. Yes. Now, I noticed that the amount of these are not very good. The last book. And I come across a uh, book of Enoch. Now, it talks about uh, Genesis 6. And I, I get asked that question all the time. Of God. Yeah. I'm going to read the book of Enoch. I encourage you to stick with what you have. The reason why is this. In God's word, there's no contradiction. Six chapter of the book of Genesis. And then I want the book of Luke about who? The resurrection and the angels, and how the people of God shall be. And I need that quick. All right, let's get Genesis first. First in Genesis chapter 6, we're at verse 1. All right, let's see our angels making babies, or we're making them. Amen. And it came to pass when men... Because first of all, let's find out the nature of angels. Hold that and give me the book of Hebrews. Let's find out the nature of angels. Glory Hebrews chapter God. 1. All right. Hebrews chapter 1 and at verse 7. Follow me. Hebrews chapter 1 and at verse 7. Mm -hmm. And of the angels, he said. Of the angels, 
God says. Who maketh his angels spirits. Who maketh his angels what? Spirits. Spirits. And his ministers a flame of fire. Now the nature of angels are divine. And the natures of angels are spirits. spirits. Spirits don't have blood. And sperm carry blood. And if spirits don't have blood, spirits don't carry sperm. Nor do spirits need a productive organ for who are spirits laying with. You see, spirits are of no relation. Give me the book of Luke. Now in the book of Luke chapter 20. Let me show you this with the Bible. Luke chapter 20, we'll start at verse 34. All right, follow me, Luke. follow me, follow me. Luke chapter 20. Chapter 20. Starting at verse 34. All this is in the Bible. Look at here. And Jesus answering said unto them, What? The children of this world matter. Wait a minute. Mm. Uh oh. Amen. Who? The children of this world matter. Are the angels of this world? The angels are not of this world. No. Children of this world matter. Marry. And are given in marriage. And they get engaged. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world. But they which shall be worthy to account that world, meaning the world to come, New Jerusalem, talk about the children of the resurrection. And the resurrection from the dead. And the resurrection from the dead. Neither marry. They don't marry. Nor are given in them. And then no one's giving them away. Neither can they die anymore. And they can't even die. For they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God. Wait a minute. They're equal to who? Unto the angels. Angels don't marry. That's right. Because angels are not of this world. That's right. Sex is not an eternal act. Boy, hey. Sex right. is a fleshy act. That's right. That takes place in this world. That's right. This world. This world. And when the church makes the resurrection, it won't be no sex there. Because we're going to be like the angel. They are equal. And the, the they are equal. 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 And the Bible says he make his angels what Spirit. nature? Spirits. Spirit. Now let's go back to the sixth chapter of Genesis. This is what I mean by making the Bible harmonize. That's right. And make and rightly divide the word of truth. Right. Men have said for years that the angels that has, that's supposed to have sex in the sixth chapter of the book of Genesis were the fallen angels. That's what they said. Right. That's a lie. That's I'm going to show you where the fallen angels are located. Give me Genesis first. first Genesis. And then we'll get the book of Jude. First Genesis chapter 6. Oh, we'll verse take one. God. Let's go to work with the Bible here. Genesis chapter 6. We're starting at verse 1. Follow me. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Who was multiplying? Men began to multiply. Men was going after women when they were making babies. Mm -hmm. And daughters were born unto them. And they had some daughters. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Sons of God means servants of God. Men are called sons of God. That's right. The Bible even says about us. Now are we the sons of God. That's right. But yet they say they were the fallen angels. All right, let's see. That, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Yes. And they took them wives of all which they chose. They took the wives of what? And they took them wives of all which they chose. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man. Yeah. My spirit shall not always strive with man. Why? For that he also, for that he also was flesh. No, the sons of God were spirit. He that he also was flesh. They were flesh. They were flesh. All right, then let me show you where the fallen angels are right now. Right now. The book of Jude. Now the book of Jude, chapter 1. Oh, I love holding this. It just gives the Bible for everything. That's right. Huh? Jude, chapter 1. It just debunk every lie these fellas come up with. Amen. Jude only got one chapter, so you can't hard to find. Right, that's the revelation. Right. Only got one chapter. Listen at this. Jude, chapter 1, and at verse 6. Follow me. And the angels. The angels. Which kept not their first estate. Which kept not their first estate. But left their own habitation. They left their own habitation. The angels' first estate was holy. And when they took sides with Lucifer, they was cast out. They left their habitation, meaning they left their dwelling place. He has reserved, he reserved those angels in what? In everlasting chains. 
everlasting change. How long those chains are on? Everlasting. How long? Everlasting. How long? Everlasting. Everlasting chains. Under darkness. Unto what? Unto un, under darkness. No, in this world. Under darkness. No, in this world. Under darkness. Those angels that was put out of heavens are in chains of darkness unto when? Unto the judgment of the great day. No, they own parole to have sex. Unto the judgment of the great day. No, they own parole to have sex once in a while. Unto the judgment of the great day. Those angels that was put out, they are in chains. They are in prison. And they're going to be in prison until judgment. Give me the book of Hebrews. Let's see who's going to judge those angels. Amen. Oh, it's a God. Do you get what I'm telling you? These liars talking about angels had sex. Angels are spirit. Spirit don't have sperm. Spirit is divine. Spirit don't carry blood. That's why they appear and disappear. There ain't no relation. Bible says, and they shall be the children of the resurrection. No marriage. No giving in marriage. And the book of Hebrews is talking about the church that said, we shall judge the angels. We're going to judge those fallen angels. Do you not know? Listen at this. Now in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And at verse 2. Come on, son. Do you not, Do know, you not know that the saints shall judge the world? The saints shall judge the world. And if the world shall be judged by you. And if the world shall be judged by you. Are you unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Yes. And verse 3. Verse 3. You know ye not? Know ye not? That we shall judge angels. Do you know what angels is talking about? And they're talking about them that didn't backslide. No. They're talking about them that was put out. That's right. The church. That's right. The church. Gonna judge angels. angels. Know ye not that Do we not shall know judge that angels? We shall judge angels. How much more things that pertain to this life? Amen. So no, I don't utilize the book of Enoch. I don't utilize it at all. I stick to what the Bible said right here. You see, I'm, I, the Bible is a book that's divinely inspired. And it's harmonized. God ain't sending angels down here to have sex with you. Uh-uh. You doing it. Amen. Hmm? Amen. You doing it and doing plenty of it. Yeah. <laughs> Am I right, I said? All right. We thank God for you. We're glad we can help you. We're going to quit. We're going to quit now. We're going to have to quit because we got another session at 6 o'clock. But if there's anybody want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, Along with the ones that stood up last night, stand on your feet. Anyone else?